the handbrake is just not holding. There's absolutely no, please stop. stop. Just, just trust me. We have run out of food, we've run out of water, we've run out of gas, pretty much. We're currently driving our UK camper van down the Pan American Highway, a legendary road from the northern tip of Alaska to the very bottom of Argentina. Subscribe and join us for the ride with new videos every Sunday. Good morning and welcome back to British Columbia and what a beautiful morning it is. But don't let that fool you because the last two, three days it has been absolute torrential and continuous rain. It was literally like being back home. In fact, I think it's the most rain we've seen since being back home. But we're parked up in this beautiful little spot just off the 37. This massive open space, just us here. Oh. Anything? No, we are good. Yesterday, I was just stood here at the front of the van, and all I could hear was this squeak, squeak, squeak. And I thought, what is that? I thought Scout was out with me with his toy. I opened up the bonnet, and there was a chipmunk inside, just sat there. I opened up, it was just staring at me. So I was looking in like this, thinking, where is it? And then squeak, squeak. And then all of a sudden, it was like this. It was like. <laughs> it wasn't. I'm only joking. What actually happened is a chipmunk dropped down somewhere like this and bounced away around out from the inside of the van. <laughs> so it is spruce tip season. At the end of these like spruce trees, there's these little jelly-like tips and they're edible. You can make them into jams. They're really good for teas. They're full of like vitamin C, loads of antioxidants. Like really good for you. So before they all turn, I'm gonna get a few. I was worried we'd gone past the season, but a few of you commented and told me, pick them, they'll last in the fridge. I've never tried spruce tips before. The smell is amazing, doesn't it? But yeah, we have run out of food, we've run out of water, we've run out of gas, pretty much. I think the last time we were in a major town was when we were on Whitehorse in the Yukon, which was what, three weeks ago? Like that, yep. We have no food left. We, I really need to wash my hair, we've got no water left. As much as these spruce tips are cool, I don't think they're gonna sustain us for the week. <laughs> We did promise one last Alaskan adventure. If you turn off Highway 37 towards the coast, you'll eventually reach Stewart and Hyder, two old mining towns at the end of the road. Stewart is in British Columbia and Hyder is in Alaska, just. The road to these towns unfolds into a deep valley, glaciers pouring out almost onto the road itself. But the real magic was waiting just beyond the tarmac. Seeing two bears sunbathing, so hopefully we can get down this road. Continue on Glacier Highway for 16 kilometers. He's literally on his back, scratching his belly. <gasps> it's a mum and a cub. <gasps> oh, it's a mum and cubs. Oh my gosh. Wow, look at that. Oh, wow. That is a grizzly. Can you see the big shoulder lump? Yeah. Wow. Amazing as that. That was awesome. I can just see the top of them still, just in the on the grass on the left. Okay. Yeah. Oh, definitely not going out to get a closer look. That's for sure. <laughs> when we got here, the little baby was like on its back, like sunbathing, just like rubbing its belly, <laughs> like like blue. Oh, it's so cute. 
Oh, that has made my day. Let's go and leave them in peace, shall we? Okay then. That is awesome. Our first glacier not covered in snow. Yeah. So there's a famous glacier on this road called Bear Glacier. Not sure if this is it, because it's not signposted. And we've, got no, and we've got no internet either. If not, it's cool anyway. We made, made it to Stuart and we need to try and stock up on some essentials. We can't stock up for seven days, it's just it's very, very expensive. So I think we'll yeah. have to get what we can for the next three days and we're just gonna have to make the big drive rather than the short drive to Prince George. Yeah. Realistically. It's we can't do a full week no. shop here. No, no. You're talking like three hundred dollars nearly. Yeah. Just sold a kidney and that got us two and a half days worth of food. I think if we were gonna provision as we planned for seven days. For the dogs as well, it would easily have been $350, $400. It was crazy. So expensive. And they only take Canadian debit cards. <laughs> so I had to go to the, the hotel lobby to get cash out. Yeah. We got the bare minimum we needed to make three meals. Uh, food for these guys, and it was $100. Yeah. It looks like there's propane at the Petro Canada fuel station, but it says here that it's a flat rate fill, which the only time we've had that before was in Nova Scotia. Yeah. And it was $50 and they did us a deal at $25. When it cost about $8, so. And it should have been eight, and I don't know if they're gonna do that here. So we might be able to get by with the propane. I think we can probably squeeze it out. If for like can't. three days. Yeah. We'll try and make propane work, but it says there is free drinking water at the petrol station. It is potable water and obviously that is um, one of the cheapest petrol stations around here so funnily enough so at least we can get a fuel we can get water which is one of the main things hopefully for free and that should be as done for at least a few days and then we're just gonna have to rejig our plans we were planning on being around here for like a week to get back to Prince George which is the main hub around here but I think we're going to have to head back to Prince George much sooner because we just really can't afford to spend $300 on food. I think this is the most scenic fuel station uh, we've ever been to, wouldn't you say? Yeah. 95 Canadian dollars. It's also the most scenic water fill up I think we've ever had, wouldn't you say? I would, look at that. Final time, should we go to Alaska? Let's go to Alaska. Because this is the only road in and out of Haida, we believe that there is no customs, apparently. That's all we've heard. Here it is. The United States of America. And to Alaska. 300 meters, turn right at Nevada okay. Street. So just had a quick noodle break for lunch, but we have come to a place called Fish Creek. Now normally you'd have to pay $5 to get here. It would be very, very busy. And the reason that we're walking on a raised boardwalk is because this is a really, really popular spot for grizzly bears to be fishing for salmon. And it's a really popular viewing platform. But there are no salmon in the rivers at the minute, so the grizzly bears are few and far between. I mean, we already saw two this morning, didn't we? The mum and her cubs. Sorry, three, yeah, the mum and her cubs. So, can't complain, but we spoke to the woman here. When there's no grizzlies, it's free, and it, she said it's a beautiful walk. So, we just come for a little stroll just to see the river. The salmon run here is around July and August. It's the beginning of June now, so we're definitely too early for it. So when we were in Prudhoe Bay, you might remember that I said the Pan American Highway takes you through all of the ecological zones from like desert and rainforest. We started off in Arctic tundra and now for the first time we've made it to the temperate rainforests of the coast. And it is absolutely incredible. They're huge, huge trees. They look so old, covered in lichen. And there's like butterflies everywhere, brightly colored birds. And then this little meadow bit with this like blue water just looks almost fake. It's so, so beautiful. 
But as beautiful as it is, we're not here to see Fish Creek. We're here to drive to a glacier. I've not been on a dirt road for a while. Pavement and gravel road. twisting and turning on the side of this mountain. It's a beautiful drive. The road is rough. So Stuart and Hyder are actually originally mining towns. And it's surprising, there's actually a lot of mining activity that still goes on here. We've driven, as we drive through, we've driven through the mining operations. Yeah. Quite cool. Lots of lorries. Lots of lies, lots of stuff being chopped down and stuff. Yeah. Lots of mining stuff. So there's high chance, an extreme chance of, uh, of high chance of avalanche. You can tell we're climbing elevation, we're back to snow around us, only a little bit. You'll never believe it, but there's a British van in front of us. There is, a UK a, a van. A UK van, no way. There is the glacier. And this is where you park to look at it, but the road is blocked by snowfall and there is like a clump of cars, there's a motorhome, like a caravan thing up here, the camper van in front of us, trucks, and it's the narrowest road with a pretty sheer drop here for everyone to try and turn around. Well, I'm, I'm really not comfortable with you turning around on here, unless you turn around further up, like where there's a bit more room. I'm not going to get He struggled there. We're much bigger. Oh yeah, and this is narrower than up there. So you're not going to be able to turn around on here. There's absolutely no... Please stop. Just trust, just trust me. Here. Yep. Yeah. Okay, yep, yeah, stop. The handbrake is just not holding. Like it just, I need to tighten the handbrake. It's re really loose. I'm really going to struggle to park on this road. There's actually nowhere safe to park. I think we have to drive back up to. Um, there was a little picnic area that had a view of the, a, a different view of the glacier. We yeah. can try there. Should we go and drive there and have a look? See what it's like. Okay. Yeah. Go on, you don't feel safe parking on. Not. On not. Oh, no, I can't. The, the van will be in the bloody. <laughs> down there with the bloody glacier. Let's, let's get all the... Oh, <laughs> to try and work out how to fix that. This is not the place you don't want your handbrake to be working. No, this yeah. is the place you need your handbrake to be working. <laughs> We're a little bit further away than we wanted to be, but this is Salmon Glacier. It's the world's largest glacier that you can drive to. Further on from where all those cars were, there is another viewpoint, but apparently that's buried under 20 foot of snow at the minute. So we knew we couldn't get to the main viewpoint, but even that car park was pretty, like, was not great. You can see the valley that it's carving already. It's incredible. You're witnessing the timeless dance of ice and stone. As we watch, the glacier is carving and shaping the earth beneath it. It reached its peak 14,000 years ago, sculpting jagged mountains and icy canyons. As it melts, the glacial water breathes life into the forested valleys below, a testament to the eternal forces that shape our entire planet. So the original plan, we thought we'd be able to spend the night up here at the glacier, but Obviously we can't go any further because there's still snow. This doesn't feel the safest, like it's a bit of a slope. We're right near the edge. And because of the handbrake issue, I don't really want to. I can stick rocks behind and it'll be fine. But, so I think our best option is battle our way back, go to into Hyder, into Stewart, and then park up next to a river for the night, I think. Oh, 
amazing that we saw a, a, a black bear with her cubs and their cubs were like that they're, they're like the so size of river when we got river they were so cute they were so they were... Cute. but they were on the side of the road i had to quickly like slam the brakes on because they were quite close to the road oh, that was so they, cool they were like proper baby bears weren't they yeah. they were so tiny you see we've seen gummy bears <laughs> literally gummy bears gummy bears bouncing here and there and everywhere da, 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 da. Well, good morning. It is the next day. We left Stuart and Heidi yesterday and we popped back up to that glacier that we saw at the side of the road. If you remember, we thought it was called Bear Glacier. Turns out it was Bear Glacier and there's a little park up here. We actually had some friends join us for a coffee yesterday. Very familiar faces, a few of you will know. They were massive inspirations to us when we first built our van. Um, so it was really cool to meet up with them on the other side of the world. They're on holiday here driving from, Can no, yeah, driving from Seattle up to Alaska. It was Theo and B from the Indie Projects. We had such a lovely evening with them. They stopped by for coffee and they didn't leave till like gone 10 o'clock. None of us had, had anything to eat. Um, so yeah, we just crashed last night, but it was so lovely to catch up with them. But yeah, we are parked right near Bear Glacier. In fact, we wanted to park down here last night. As you can see, there's just a track here. On the photos on iOverlander, all of this is completely dry. But I guess with the snow melt, it's all flooded now, so we couldn't get down here. You're not gonna take an early morning swim? Hell no. The glacier is literally just around that corner. You can't quite see it. But this water is fresh off the glacier. No way, I'm not even put my hands in it. <laughs> I'm cold this morning. Cause you can see there's a firing just in this little gravel bit that's in the middle of the river. And there's tire tracks there. That would be, Im imagine this would be so epic to park in. Officially, kind of coming towards the end of these big, big drives through completely remote wilderness. We have been doing for the past two months pretty much 13, 14 hour driving weeks just to get through to the place that we need to go to get up to the north of Alaska and back down again. And just to kind of put it in perspective as to just how vast it is up here. When it was COVID, we were on the west coast of Portugal, right? And Spain was closing their borders and there was all this drama going on. So we made the decision, the decision to drive from Portugal back to Calais to get back to the UK before Spain shut their borders. And it was a 14 hour drive from where we were to Calais. And we were like, oh my God, this is a mammoth drive. We have got to get ready. But it was just like a massive thing. And we did it in two days. And it was like, if you imagine all of the history, all of the different places that you can see from the west coast of Portugal up to Calais, from Northern Spain, the Pyrenees, the South of France, the West coast of France, all the different places, all the different languages and the different cultures on that stretch. Driving 15, 16 hours through Europe, how many different landscapes and places that you'll pass. Whereas here, you can drive for 15 hours, still be in the same forest and maybe pass a handful of settlements. And we've been doing that for like two months. That is just how fast it is up here. It's almost incomprehensible. And we're gonna miss it so much, aren't we? Right, yeah. The roads are starting to get a little, a little bit busier the further south we're heading. And yeah, it's been absolutely epic. doing a lot of driving recently so we found a nice little hike to do on all trails just a three kilometer loop so we spent the past two months driving through this thick thick forest 
and now we're getting to walk in it and it's absolutely beautiful it's so dense we've got the bear spray and we're singing our bear songs come on i wish we had a smell of vision it smells like hot earth pine trees and then the strongest scent from all these wild roses everywhere Oh my gosh. I just climbed through that thick, thick forest onto this lookout point and I just can't believe how much forest just stretches into into the horizon it's like the land before time look how primeval it looks and can you see over there those seven mountain peaks like one two three four five six seven they're called the seven seven sisters but honestly I, it's, it's beautiful isn't it it's kind of forest that would like eat you alive it's just yeah. i've never seen anything like it Let's get loud, let's get loud All the bears, can you hear this sound? We're about to go over a crazy narrow single lane metal grid bridge a bakery here by David and Teresa from Aviators Overland and they said the cinnamon buns here are absolutely amazing and I think after that hike we deserve it we deserve a couple of cinnamon buns each a couple each okay ready <sighs> Ta -da! so these cinnamon um, rolls they ice in front of you so they don't have icing on already and I've gone for a cinnamon roll and a little lemon strudel and Ben's gone for a cinnamon roll and yeah. an almond... Almond croissant. Almond croissant. Oh, that's really good, babe. <laughs> mm. Is it good? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to lie, I was a little bit sceptical of the icing because I normally like the drizzly icing. That is amazing. Mmm! And it's like velvet. Yeah, it's really good. It's creamy, isn't it? Just what we need. <laughs> Well, I think it is officially the end of an era. It's the end of our big drive through the far north, through northern Canada, the Yukon, northern BC, far north of Alaska. Those snowy frozen landscapes, I think, have officially come to an end. It's now 32 degrees. There's people everywhere. There's towns and villages all along our route south now. So yeah, I think it's officially the end of our journey in the far north. And it has just been an absolutely incredible experience, but traveling in winter with two dogs in a van means the van gets absolutely filthy and Sophia is disgusting inside. It's really hard obviously when you're all living in that small space with the dogs and everything to get everything cleaned out, to get everything deep cleaned because normally for that we need the dogs or one of us to be out of the van so we can give it all a good scrub down which is impossible when it's cold and snowy and wet outside. So what we've got in there is an accumulation of maybe three, two to three months worth of filth. Today she's having a deep clean, I'm gonna organize everything and just get Sophia feeling like a new woman, ready for the summer. Yeah, it's coming off the bottom. Do we have any more nails? No, we don't. So we're just sorting out a few cupboards and one of them, the bottom is coming away of the drawer. They're only nailed in, weren't they? Yeah. And I think they have a shooken a loose. Everything could do with a Titan after at least the last six weeks driving all the way up on crap roads, wouldn't you say? Yeah, well, we've got two years since we've done this. 
yeah, that's including true. all over Turkey, yeah, Mexico. Yeah, that's true. Dead horse. <laughs> Who has a postcard that is a picture of a road sign? I also got this pack of really cool illustrated cards from when we're in Denali. I got them because of this one, which has got like a, a wolf staring at his reflection. As soon as we'd seen that black wolf up on the way to Prudhoe Bay, thought we'll put this in the van somewhere, but still haven't found a home for it, so I'm gonna do that now. There's a little Alaskan wolf. <sighs> So under here is like um, our pots and pans, the Omnia, and then behind here is like all the cleaning stuff that's in this cupboard. Honestly, it had just like a layer of dirt, of grime, of dog hair, and the odd stray dog biscuit. And this is all our like toiletries and stuff. And then the food cupboards, which were broken, Ben's fixed. So at least the kitchen is kind of looking much better now. It's just all of this now. It's the toilet, we've got this cupboard and let me show you state of my clothing cupboard. <gasps> it's just <laughs> shoved. It doesn't even shut properly. One thing I've realized as I'm showing you around in the cupboards and stuff is that we have never ever done a van tour of this layout. We did a van tour about four years ago when we first built the van. Since then, we've ripped it out, rebuilt it like this, driven to Turkey and back, and then now all the way up to Alaska. So this layout, layout has had a full test run. I think we can tell you everything that works, doesn't work, how it's managed on some crazy roads. Um, as some of you know, in July we have two weddings that we have to fly back home for. We were gonna have a break from YouTube for those couple of weeks, but we're just wondering if you'd be interested in a van tour, maybe we could squeeze it in then. So if you're interested in a van tour, let us know in the comments and maybe we'll try and find some time to film it before we go and show you around what we've been living in for the past well, two and a half years. Fish is this? So this is one that we haven't had before. Um, it's called rockfish, and like it was only five Canadian dollars for like two decent sized fillets. Like normally, some of the fish are like 13 mm. 15 dollars. So I've googled it, and it seems to taste like take people say it tastes really nice. It's from the app, like so. I don't know. So we're gonna try it anyway see what it's like. But yeah, $5 for, for all oh, of that. It's not a Ben caught fish, is it yet, though? It's not, no, it's not from Ben yet. I'm working on it, I'm working on it. Okay, we have got courgette, lemon, and feta orzo with this rockfish with a, like a lemon and garlic little butter thing on top. So it should be nice, nice and fresh and summery. Very nice. Am I the right. guinea pig? You are the guinea pig. Oh, no. I've never made this before. No. There you go, enjoy. Thank you, baby. I just wanna say we're really making progress. As you see, as we're really starting to head south now. So when we were, hang on, let me just go back to Fairbanks. We've kind of been heading southeast, whereas it was here. So last week we came down the 37, and this is a Stuart Cassia Highway. This is the there's two roads that go through British Columbia up to Alaska. This one is the Alaska Highway, which is what we did um, on the way north, and we're coming back down this one, which is the Stuart Cassia Highway. Um, so that Boyer Lake, that beautiful, amazing turquoise lake was only just here. And then I think last week we made it down, down to here. So we didn't really do much, but this week we made much more progress and we just followed the 37 south until we cut in here to Stuart and Hyder and went up to the glacier, which was kind of around here. And you can see this gray bit is actually part of Alaska. So Alaska runs down the coast here. So there you can pop into the little Alaskan town. And then now we've come down here and we kind of finished the, the Stuart Cassia Highway. And today, and, and at this lake, we're somewhere around here, I think, um, at Sunset Lake. But yeah, so now we've almost done that kind of circle and we're heading, making our way back to Vancouver. But yeah, you can see we're definitely making bigger steps south, which is probably why the temperature's gone from like two degrees to 32 degrees in the space of two days. 
be absolutely loving British Columbia and there is still so much more to come. Is going on with your hair? Oh yeah, my, my horns. <laughs> I look like a what warthog. Are, what are those? <laughs> what are those? Do you want to hang any coats off my face? Oh my god, you can hook fish with those. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to dunk you in and I'll hold you in by your feet. <laughs> Don't worry, I do. <laughs> Catch a nice big trout with these. Banana for the road. Banana for the road. Everybody's got to have a banana for the road. And if there's no bananas, then you can have a peach too. And if there's no peaches, then a plum will do. And if there's no bananas, peaches or plums, then you're going to have to just be a hungry bum. What the hell are you singing? Banana for the road. I've never heard banana that. Banana for... I just made it up.